once again, people, and welcome to um, the first level of Dark Hour. Last time around, we did a lengthy introduction. In fact, nearly less than an hour. So we got a lot of the um, necessary precursor stuff out of the way. So without further ado, I really could just start um, talking about the first level. Yay! So as usual, um, for how I'm basically going to do this, I'm going to load up on Dark Hour, tell you what it tells you there, and then we'll play the level itself. So you'll hear on the loader that I showed you guys last time, and if you don't remember what it says, it says, Alex Bavisky on behalf of Microforum.ink. Um, and it's basically a small level with a fighting cage in the center. Um, yeah, that really doesn't tell us much. But Alex Bavisky was one of the developers. In fact, he was one of the lead developers of Dark Hour. Um... So, yeah, he, he basically was one of the main developers. Um, and there's a small level with a fighting cage in the center, all right? Um, the interesting thing about this one is that... Well, let's close that. So annoying and trying to hear it while I'm just trying to explain it to you. But um, there's also a readme, which interestingly enough says a little bit more. It says, this map is not that hard. It looks like a rectangle with a boxer ring in the middle. Up to six players can play this map. This map loads automatically after you finish Monster's Map. Um, so, yeah. First of all, this is an important thing to note. This is the first level since um, Actual Quake that has multiplayer and single player as a level. Um, the entirety of Q2, we basically had a level that would either play in multiplayer or a map that play in single player. This map is intended for both. That That's pretty interesting after everything we've seen. Um, like I said, th this sometimes occurs and whatnot. Um, I, I believe I call these quick supported levels. Um, just because it's a lot easier of a name to remember than multiplayer, single player level or so. And it basically, it, you know, it's just shorthand for basically saying it's supported by all game modes. Um, at least all classical game modes. Because if it's supported, single player so, uh, supported cooperative. Um, so yeah, if it's basically uh, functions of both single player and multiplayer, I just consider it a supported level. Um, and that's where I get my terminology, and that's why uh, my Quake Quick Eye, it's all called um, supported levels. Um, but yeah, Dog's Ring and... What else is there? Oh, yeah. There's a very interesting thing about that last line. Um, there was no map of Dark Hour that's monsters. At all. <laughs> um, yeah. Th there's no map that leads here. There's no map called monsters. And, uh, yeah. Um, but this map is credited as being one of the lead developers of Dark Hour. So that suggests that they didn't get this from outside. They got this from um, internally in Dark Hour. Also, trying to look it up online, I'm getting absolutely no information about it. Um, I believe someone did like a like a uh, this is like a terrible level or so. But that person, it seems like the same texture is used in Dark Hour, and Dark Hour keeps like a consistent texture set. So I believe that it wouldn't be used in the original version if there was one. Um, but yeah, I'm not seeing anything that says the Dark's Ring was existent before Dark Hour. Um, and that pretty much is the theme with a lot of these. They, they have weird anomalies like that, but yet we don't have any evidence that can basically say it. Um, uh, I looked into it a bit more, and apparently... What basically happened was they were allowed to create, like, some in-house levels as well as they were to take, like, a certain number of levels from the internet. They would go and ask people to get these levels, and there was supposed to be a large-scale pack of about, like, I want to say, like, 80 levels or so. 
Um, but what that ended up happening was nobody really wanted to give them their levels because there really was a compensation for it. They couldn't exactly offer anything to them. So that really didn't go through. And what ended up happening was we got a pack where they took nobody's levels from the internet. It really just was their own stuff. At least supposedly. Um, they, they don't say anywhere that they took anything from anyone else. But like I said, there's certain things like this. Um, because where's the monsters map? Um, it feels rather weird that we have a read me specifically saying monsters. Um, and then there's no uh, map in here that's monsters. Or a map that even leads to dog ring. Um, so yeah, it's just a really, really weird scenario where it's almost... It makes it even more suspicious than it has been because, like I said, why is this a thing? What is monsters? Um, hopefully one day someone somewhere can eventually figure this out, find out what monsters is. Um, but yeah, try and type in Quake monsters and you're probably going to find a bunch of things just talking about the monsters in Quake. So it's going to be a pain in the butt to hunt for. And good luck finding anything, because everything's, like I said, a lot of history has been removed from the internet. Um, because of the closing of GameSpy and whatnot. So yeah, no idea what this level was. Um, <laughs> good luck. And this is, I mean, by, I have no idea what Dark Hour is. I have no idea if it rips stuff, I don't know if it's in-house. Um, I just know that allegedly they started out doing a bit of both, and then uh, they did a lot less levels than they initially said, and supposedly it's all in-house. Um, but I don't know how 100% true that is. Nothing is ever confirmed, really, either way. Um, so yeah. Hooray for ambig ambiguity! Anyway, um, one last thing, actually, I should make sure of before we start, is that I set my skill to three. Because that's the thing, I set the map to load, but I didn't set my skill to 3 again. Um, because I created a new directory without Q2 um, in there, so that way we didn't have a lot of conflicts. And so that way I could actually load up regular Quake and just load up this one level. Um, so yeah, there we are. Dog Ring will be loading up. Okay, let's see this thing, baby. Okay, Dog's Ring. Oh my god, everything's trying to kill me. Well, well, this is a terrible start. Everything's trying to kill me. Uh, there is a reason why everything doesn't murder you in the first few seconds of the game. But oh god, a boy. Yeah, ten out of sixteen. So everything, and there's still a bunch of stuff that was around and around. So yeah, this is a level where pretty much everything is around the beginning area, trying to kill you within the first few seconds. Yeah! Anyway, here's like the texture set you'll see in a lot of Dark Hour levels. But yeah, this is one of the weaker of the Dark Hour levels, honestly. This is like, you know, it, it almost seems like it makes sense that it's one of the first ones. Because, yeah, this one isn't the best at all. Oh god! Get, get me out of here! Get, get me out of here! Okay, let's try and hit upstairs. Oh, no! That didn't work! Okay, no! Oh great, this is it's a good Did I tell you how much fun this is? Okay. This ain't working out too well. And I blew myself up because I was trying to use the nail gun. Now if I can actually think for a few seconds, we might actually get somewhere. Oh god. Well, this is a disaster. Hey, Welts! Hey, Welts! Or can I actually breathe her for a few seconds? Okay. I think for a minute we can actually breathe. Thank God, that was crazy. So, yeah, basically this is an area with a bunch of enemies that attack you. There's lots of Rottweilers, some Knights, a Vor. 
Basically, this place hates your guts. Um, these little starry things, they're buttons. You press it, it opens a door. So we can kill guys like that. Uh, you come in here, you press one of these switches, it opens the doors. As basically was said, it's basically just a rectangular um, room. The main focus is on this one little doorway here, this little cage. And uh, buttons that basically open up the main cage. You have buttons on the inside and these buttons that open up the outside. Except for the fact that the outside, there's no button over here. Yeah, so you can't open up this door from the outside. Rather weird. And none on this side either, which is really strange. Um, we have one on each of the narrow sides. I believe I've done this at like Geoquake. Yeah, I believe it graphically is different there. Um, I believe like these actually exist on Geoquake, but they're like glitched into the wall, so you can't actually like use them. Here we basically have two that work on the these far sides, but nothing on the near sides. This makes a bit more sense than when I saw a GL quake. Oh, well at least I landed on top of the cage. Um, but yeah, really this is a map whereby you just kill everything in the beginning area and hope not to die, and then everything is dead. Like I said, it's not really the highlight map to start with. This is probably one of the weakest maps of Dark Hour. Though it does show some things that are improved from Q2. First of all, we do have elevation. Elevation here, people. We have height differences. Look at that. There we are. That's all the goodies up there. Um, we have more than two textures. I mean, look at this. There's a floor texture here. Um, there's the brown texture for the ramp. There's this cage texture, which is made up of three things all around it. Actually, four. Look at that. This cage is like made up of four textures. It's double the textures of a single Q2 level. Yeah. Let's see, actually, it's a three. One, two, three. Another teleporter thing. So, yeah, that's four. So, yeah, four textures. Amazing. And then you add the other two sets, that's textures, that's three times what you see in the best looking Q2 levels. So, texture wise, this thing definitely trumps it. Um, the fact of the matter is, we didn't have buttons anywhere in Q2 either. So now we have functional buttons. We have torches, those were only seen in the best looking um, Q2 levels, like only the first few. We have different lighting levels. We have some areas that are light, some areas that are totally dark. That's something you really didn't see at all in Q2. Q2 was always one static light. Um, oh yeah, do you also hear the music? Yep! For the first time since the cust since we started um, playing custom maps, we actually have custom... Um, well, we have music in a Q2 level. Uh, well, in a... In a level, just in a Q2 level, but in a custom level, we actually have music. Um, I believe this is the one that'd be used in like, like E1M2 or E2M2. It's basically the level two music. Um, but yeah, this is a level that's pretty simplistic in design um, in comparison to a lot of the other Dark Hour stuff. But as you see, it does show a lot of signs of being better, um, and just in terms of quality of what's here. Like I said, the music, the buttons, the elevation, the lighting, the torches, uh... The fact that there was quite a little bit of risk here trying to get through this dog ring of everything trying to murder me. There was a lot of action going on here, um... It wasn't exactly the nicest action, um, honestly, if you know, like, anything about, like... Level design when it comes to Quake or Doom or all those, usually the idea is to not have the beginning room basically throw murdering things at you. It usually should try and be fair to you while you're loading up a map before you like move into it. As soon as you move, it's fair game. But that first start usually should be pretty calm. And so this doesn't exactly fit that design idea. Um, but other than that, it has some action going here. You could kill a lot of things, even if most of the things are weak moves. Um, we had a lot less centric Brent design for once. It was a lot more rot based. 
Though that sounds more appropriate because this is Dog's Ring. Uh, you know, it makes sense to have a bunch of melee based opponents in the middle of Dog's Ring. Um, so, yeah, I kind of understand that. Plus, if you notice, one other big thing is we have staircases. We have the central area here. A central cage is definitely something you wouldn't see in Q2. Because in Q2, they wouldn't design detailing at all. And here you have, like, small gratings. You have little details that make it better. Like I said, this is probably one of the most simplistic levels in Q2. Mainly because it's one room. And all logistics, all real things, it's a really just a one room map. With a bunch of stuff that murders you at the bottom. And at the top you have some power-ups. You know, so you really have to kind of like rush up here as fast as possible to get the power-ups and not die. Then basically use the power-ups to kill everything down here. It's pretty simplistic when it comes down to it. It's just a rush to get up there. And of course a little bit of platforming. Something you really don't see at all in Q2. Um, but yeah. Dog's Ring. It's something. It's, it's improvement from what we've seen. And that's kind of, I guess, the point of this. It, it, it's not the best, the best is yet to come, but it is a sign that we are at least getting the better times of what we've been, we've been seeing. And I guess at the end of the day, that's all that really matters is that it stands out. Um, a cage in the middle of the map or whatnot, you don't see in every single Dark Hour level. You know, you can tell this level apart from all its peers, which is something that can't be said for Q2. Also, one thing I do have a curiosity about, why is it that, like, some of these ramps aren't, like, aligned properly? Like, th this ramp doesn't, like, go all the way to the top. You have to, like, jump across. I don't know if it's to make it harder or if there's, like, an actual logical reason for this, but it's rather weird design. They're, like, the ramps are so oddly placed instead of just, like, being a natural incline. It's, like, it said, so jagged. But, whatever. Oh. Anyway, that's really Dog's Ring in a nutshell. Nothing really I can say here besides waste more of your time. And I think I'm gonna be nice. I've already almost wasted 20 minutes, so yeah, that's kind of like a longer Q2 level. And that's kind of a long time for just a one rep map, but I kind of wanted to put a bit of emphasis in the fact that, Mara, that we have a lot changing. Honestly, like I said, this is why exactly I consider Dark Hour to have more quality than Q2. Um, I, I really don't think that even has to be argued based on what you just saw. Um, like I said, it, it's a one-room map, and honestly, I'm not a big fan of one-room maps, because a big part of single-player, at least in general, is expira exploration. I like the idea of exploring a map and trying to find out where I'm going and seeing the world and whatnot. In a one-room area... It just feels dull. It feels, um, limited. It feels like, well, there's everything. Congratulations, you saw everything, you're done. It, it, it's just kind of, like, final. When I prefer, like, a bit more exploration being involved. Um, so yeah, this is definitely one of my lesser-liked maps, probably a dark hour. Just because one room maps aren't my favorite. So, yeah, it, 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 it's not exactly the highlight of Dark Hour by any means. Um, specifically because of that beginner design thing, as I said, and the one room idea, as I said. And in fact, that's pretty much over in like two seconds if after you murder everything. But it does show signs of progress. Like I said, there's a lot of, um, I guess you could say, detailing or whatnot going on in the background that you can definitely tell that this is a more refined product than the last 101 levels we played. Um, and that really is kind of, I guess, the big point of this, is to say at least it, you know, does do a, lo a lot of things better than Q2 um, on the appearance front. Which, like I said, there's kind of like a double-edged sword to um, appearance. Like I said, um... I'm not a person that really needs a lot. I don't need, like, um, fancy-looking things and everything to be highly detailed and all that, no. Um, the reason why exactly, like, details matter a little bit, at least, is just because the fact that matter things like Q2 exist. And the problem with Q2 
is that everything blends together. Um, and when everything blends together and it feels like you're just playing the same level over and over, there is no interest. There's no real feeling that you're going somewhere different. It's just another level um, with a couple rooms that all look the same. And that's pretty much it. You know, at least here, it feels like a place. It feels like a thing. Um, like I said, I still, this type of level doesn't really work just because the Wonder Room design. But it does feel like a place. It feels like some type of boxing ring or something like that, which is what it's trying to go for. Um, there is a weird glitch, like I said, with the buttons. But the bu uh, buttons seem to only really be an issue if you try and go to, like, future versions. Which I guess you can't say, really, they were designing this for those type of uh, things. They were designing this for original Dosquake. So, this is kind of how they expected the game to be played, just like I just showed you. And not, like, GL Quake in that fancy generation. Um, even if it's a few months apart, it's the fact that matter that it was made with, uh, with different software intentions in mind. And so, something like that that only shows up in GL Quake... Um, I kind of would blame more GeoQuake and the fact that there's a lack of compatibility than I would the original, um, uh, map. Um, otherwise I'd have to blame a lot of things in, in found in dark places on, uh, like, uh, well, like, not dark places, but New Dark. I have to blame a lot of things in New Dark on what, what, you know, the maps originally did or whatnot, but I feel it's a lot of New Dark's fault. And, yeah, I would say that it's a real flaw of GL Quake or whatnot. It's apparently the placement of things. Um, I, I do believe there is indeed some little minor flaws about GL Quake. Um, specifically when it's in regards to texturing. Um, basically when it comes to textures, you need to have, like... I, I believe it is you can't have the same name of a texture in GL Quake... Or it ends up basically glitching um, and doesn't work right. Um, I believe it needs to be like that. It, it basically, it will. Basically, there's a glitch in Quake whereby if you load a map with one texture and then you load a, a different map that has the same texture, that but a different texture, it will still have retained the first one. Um, hmm. There's like a good map to show that. Because there's a lot of ones that I want to do. Um, uh, yeah, I'm kind of going a little bit over my time or what, not, what I was planning to do, but I want to show you guys something quickly. Just to show you what I'm talking about here. Um, so if I go to like... Where's a good map for that? Where's like a good... Wizard texture... E2M4. Yeah, you know what? Okay, let's let's get out of this. I want like I want E2M5 actually. That's a good level. E2M5. So I'll go like E2M5. E2M6. And then finally. For good measure, E1M9. Wait, no, E1M8. There is no 9. I, I was trying to compensate by 1. Huh. Mm. Oh, did we just not load any of the maps with it? I forget the texture bug. I forget, like, what maps have the other brown texture that I'm thinking of. I, I need to think for a second. Um, let me actually look it up and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. That way you can see. Um, like I said, it's been, it's been a little bit of time, so I kind of haven't exactly thought of this in a while. But I decided, for some reason now, um, oh, it's only found in... E4M sets pain maze. That that would explain a lot. And E4M sets pain maze, and it's gonna replace that texture. I see. So 
so if we load up like apparently map start so if we load up start there should be like a certain blue stone texture on the ground let's see if we can find it it'll be a flooring texture so I don't really have to go out of my way too much to find it. Okay, where in God's name is it? Oh, well, here it is, like right here. And say we'll get out of this, instead we load up E4M6 Pain Maze. That, that's the first level we'll load up. So, we load up E4M6, the Pain Maze. And so we have this bloody level, we have all this, we get bounced around, we get hit by a lot of stuff. Oh dear god, everything's trying to kill me. And then we go to start again. I believe this will result. It might not because of the... Yeah, see it's not working. You know what, I'm actually going to get rid of the extra stuff for a second and we're going to see if it still exists. That's the thing, this is the reason why I want to show it off also, is to almost see if it works in the original Quake. Um, usually I talk about it in GL Quake, but I haven't exactly tried bothering in the original game. And so it's almost like a brimming curiosity to see if it existed um, in the original game or is it something introduced by Geoquake. Yeah, see, that's the good stone one. So, yeah, you want E2M5 and then E1M7 or something. So, let's do that. E2M5, then E2M7. Well, E. So, we load up E2M5. Oh, well, look at that. Something fell out of the level. Look at that. This is the official level, and things are falling out of the level. Ain't that brilliant? Are you happy now? It's curious. I'm looking for a certain texture that would tell me... Well, there's the texture way up there. So that's the texture we want to see on the ground of a map like, say, E1M8. Huh! Look at that! It's the same old texture! So yeah, I think I just actually did, um, found a little bit more of the flaw with GL Quake. Um, basically, GL Quake handles things a bit differently than the original Quake in terms of texturing. And one big difference is in regards to the same name textures. Um, if, a, uh, if a texture has the same name, and you basically load up another level, as I was trying to show off there, it basically results in the second map retaining the first map's textures, at least in GL Quake. Um, in the original Quake, it seems like that isn't actually a problem. Um, I just proved actually that doesn't occur. Um, so that's rather interesting to note. Um, a little random tidbit. Um, another issue about GL Quake that makes it even worse, um, is if that um, those two textures are a different size. Um, if they're like a different pixel resolution or different thing like that, if they're a different scale, that causes huge problems in GL Quake. Um, if you load up like that second map or so, it'll basically output an error and will allow you to load up the map. Um, so basically that prevents me from like playing like Aftershock maps or something like that. Um, by loading up the id maps, you need to load up by, like, the Aftershock map pack or so, because then it loads up those textures, and those textures have a different scale than the original textures. Um, so yeah, you really can't play, like, Aftershock with the original game, or the original game with Aftershock, if you're on GL Quake. It sounds like you can actually pull that off in Original Quake. Um, based on what I'm seeing there, it might actually work fine and be retained. But yeah, that, that's just a little flaw with Geocrate that, uh, that I decided to mention for some reason here. How exactly did I get on the subject? 
Um, I think I was talking about the graphical glitches that we saw in GL Quake um, versus no graphical glitches here. Um, but yeah, um, there's some evidence for you. <laughs> um, so yeah, other than that, just a cage. It's just a cage. There's really nothing to this. Um, it's not the best map in the world. Like I said, I don't like one map levels, so it's pretty much bore me because, you know, you're pretty much there for a second, you see it, you're done. And I like more the idea of exploration. So, basically speaking, this isn't really my cup of tea. And probably something more like Q uh, Q2 Q2 would probably be better for me in this case because there you actually get to go somewhere. Um, the biggest problem, though, is that Q2 levels don't stick out, don't have, like, any way to determine them whatsoever. And so you end up feeling like you're playing the same thing over and over and over. So, yeah, um, not exactly the best level by itself, but it does show signs of quality, which shall transpose to levels with more than one room, which we'll hopefully see in the very short future. Anyway, thank you very much all for watching. I was kind of rambling and trying to show you this um, texture-based stuff, and now I've stretched it out to 30 minutes. Aren't you proud of me? <laughs> I seriously, I have trouble keeping our video short. Um, anyway, thank you very much all for watching. It has been an adventure, and I shall see you all next time.